Welcome to another episode of Making Dough Show, where we love talking about dough in the restaurant business. My name is Hangum, and as I record this, we have six restaurants here in San Antonio, and we love making dough around here. We are in the pizza business, so you know what I mean. Okay, let's get into it. Today, I want to share with you 10 tips for a new manager. You may be tuning into this episode because you are in management. Maybe you're getting transferred to another location. So maybe you worked at a particular store. You know, we have managers move locations often based on need. We may lose a team member or we open a new store and we have people move to another store, all the things. Or is it that you've worked in, say, in our case, in a restaurant industry for five years, for 10 years, and you have management experience and you are applying at a new establishment that you're joining that team. So you are a new manager at that new establishment, correct? Or within a company, if you've been here for five years at our restaurant operations, but you're getting moved to another unit, you are a new manager at that place. So these 10 tips will hopefully serve you. This is kind of a basic of a summary of things I went over with one of our managers who just recently got transferred. Incredibly important to manage expectations up front, setting the expectations for a new manager that goes to a new store. This is going to be a new experience for this team member, though she's been here for maybe a couple of years. So that's that. Let's get into it. Hopefully this will serve you. Let me know your thoughts in the comments in the description. Subscribe and let's stay in touch. First is to discover and don't dictate. When you arrive at a new establishment, it is incredibly critical that you do not get in there changing stuff. One of the challenges is you're going to go there. For example, in our case, you're working at one of our stores, you go to this new store and you're going to go in there and find all the things that are new, all the things that the other store does, or maybe if your past, however, you all set things up going to this new store, you going in there and changing stuff up will lead to people quitting, lead to team being disengaged. Nobody will follow you. It's going to be incredibly hard for you. So upon arrival, you have got to come up with a plan. The first two weeks, don't go in there changing anything because it's your observation phase. Second thing is, and it's incredibly important, is for you to be strategic with building relationships with existing team members there. This is not the time for you to talk. You know what? I got to impress them with my experience. Your work ethic and what you do will impress enough. If you are fast at what you do, again, we're in the pizza business. If you are a fast pizza maker as a manager and you worked at a busier store of ours and you go into a store that's slower, you don't need to yell at people, tell them to get their hustle on. You be the fastest. People will know who you are. So don't be going around bragging about yourself. Don't go around talking. You need to be asking a lot of questions and making the time to get to know each team member. And so they will get on board. They know where you're coming from and they will like you because you've shown interest in them. They won't like you because you have an impressive resume. That's an ego driven approach to relationships, which never works in any kind of relationship. The third point here is to dive into procedures and mastering the basics. Here's what's going on. You have to, before you move stuff around, because you think that the flow makes no sense for, say, this kind of to-go boxes or to be where they're at, and you want to choose to move it. Or why do we have the balsamic drizzle over here? It should be over there where the salads are made. That could be a valid point. But initially, when you join that team, you have got to understand their ways, their processes, their procedures and ask genuine questions. Don't be asking questions. Oh yeah. Well, why are you guys not putting it over there? You know, that's way smarter and faster, but this is not the time to impress. Figure out why they do what they do at that store and genuinely show interest. Like, I really want to know what's going on is, you know, how come we have this over here? Or is there a reason for that? I really want to know. And I want to re- really learn. So this is your third tip. Just gather the basic procedures and the way that things are done at this new store first. Now, the fourth thing is to harness collective insights. Your team needs to feel and perceive that you value their feedback. Nobody wants to follow a leader who does not value feedback. In fact, it's incredibly poor leadership 
because you are one yourself as a manager that work for an owner or you work for an area manager and you want to feel that your feedback is valued, then you must do the same thing. Otherwise it's considered hypocrisy, right? You as a new manager, you need to make sure your people that are under you feel that you value their feedback. That's going to come about again, asking questions and getting their feedback. Okay. Next is empowering through knowledge. What does that mean? You've got to assess and evaluate skills. I told you if you come into a location and you have higher skill set because you work at busier restaurants and you come into this restaurant that it's slower hypothetically and you think you are all that, you need to make sure you first off evaluate your team member skill set. And the way you do that is by actually measuring it. Skill set, hard skills must be measured. I have these conversations with our managers all the time. People have opinions about things. This person's fast. They are good. I hear all these terms here and there, and it's irrelevant. These are all opinions and opinions because you're comparing someone to someone. That's not the way to measure skill set. Hard skills must be measured. What do I mean? For instance, gutting the make line and cleaning it up at closing is a hard skill, right? And there's a standard of cleaning that we change every single container. We got to put date stickers on them. You know, the drill, we got to wipe everything down, all the things. Gutting the, the make line to standard may take me 10 minutes. It may take you 30 minutes. And the only way we're going to find that out is by measuring time, time trials. So you want to make sure you set some skills in place. You're like stretching dough. You you know what, guys, everybody, we're going to go through, starting with me, we're going to do time trials of stretching a 16-inch dough or prepping blah, blah, blah sauce. How long is it taking to make a batch of dough? You know what? John is taking 45 minutes from start to finish. The standard has got to be the same for everybody, right? You know, from start to finish, you're like, you know, John is taking him 45 minutes. Joe is, you know, taking him an hour and a half, right? So it has got to be measurable, objective way of measuring hard skills, and publishing it publicly. We usually have a whiteboard or it's uh, a poster laminate where people will write down, you know, stretch times, make times, you know, closing times, very specific things that we're going to do measuring hard skills. So that's the phase. You're not coming across, you know, that, you know, guys, let, let me show you how it's done. Let, let me, let me brag about how fast I am going in there. Um, Again, you won't get buy-in. Nobody will listen to you and nobody will respect you. But you're going to lead in there and say, hey, guys, let's get a baseline of our skill set where we are so we know where everybody is it is, and we're going to figure out where the standard is because they need to be standard in your restaurant, right? That's another topic. And compared to standard guys, we're going to find the gap and we're going to help everybody's going to move uh, faster at whatever thing we're doing. We're going to focus on one thing at a week. So those has got to be you really, again, assessing and evaluating people's skill sets. The next thing is, you know, vision casting. You have got to inspire your team. You've got to show them a vision of what's possible. You can't go in there. Hey guys, you know, the reason I send me, to, they send me to this store is because, you know, y'all don't have it together or you're all so slow and blah, blah, blah. Don't, this is not the way to lead. And it probably was a poor choice sending you if that is your attitude. Hopefully that's not the case. So you need to cast a vision. Hey guys, the, I'm making stuff up, but like, you know, the store sales are about 10 and, you know, our team is on pool tips. You know, if we grow the sales by this much, if we get five more reviews, then we can do this. We're competing with this other store or, you know, create a little bit of a competition. Maybe, Hey, John, let's week, you know, let's see John and Susan and Susie, you know, what is our upselling, you know, average ticket and whoever uh, has the highest, you know, average ticket, you know, gets a, whatever, free cake or sandwich or a Starbucks card or something that you're encouraging people for them to see what's possible for them to push themselves a little bit to get better. Um, That's very important. And each team is different. So it's kind of hard to explain what I mean, but you've got to have a vision for that team before you go in there. And it starts with you assessing where you are. That's why we, as a team, where is your team at? Their skill set and where they need to be and identifying that gap and casting a vision, how you're going to walk them through support them through the process to get them to where they need to be to meet standard. Next one is steady and systematic changes. You've got to prioritize and implement. 
you're going to go into a new establishment as a manager and you're going to find 30 things that probably need to be improved and changed. You've got to prioritize. What's the top three things that are higher priority that will have the most impact? If you focus and stress over things that have low impact, you will get results that will have low impact. And it's going to be very discouraging. So look at all the things that need to get done. In fact, I would make a list. I want to get people's buy-in. Hey, guys, the store need to be cleaner. Let's unpack that. Like the dish station is really dirty or the vent hoods need to be cleaned or the dining room, you know, the edges need to be, whatever it is, the mopping needs to get better. Make a list of everything. And you're like, you know what, within these, the front is uh, customer facing. Let's focus on that. You, this week, guys, our focus is this. Then you're going to come up with a checklist. That's why I said systematic way of doing things. And that is you creating a system. You've got to create a checklist for it and focus on one area of improvement at a time. So that's steady and systematic changes. One to two things at a time. That's all things people can handle. And one week at a time, we're going to have some systematic improvements happening here. Celebrating milestones. Nobody wants to follow a leader or a manager that does not appreciate and celebrate milestones. you got to, again, once you get that baseline of where, where everybody is, is and their skill set, every time you see improvement, you got to make a huge deal about it. Nobody needs to improve, right? They are doing it. They're doing their best. you got to show some love to your team. And it could be as simple as acknowledging them. Send them a message and say, hey, John, tonight you crushed it. I was so impressed when you were on the pizza cut line. It was super busy. And I'm just so glad you're part of our team. Just thanking people to be part of the team, being there for you. Uh, no one wins alone. This is not a tennis, you know, what we play in the restaurant business. This is not the same game. We're in the basketball game or football, if you know what I mean. If you're into sports, you know what I mean. And dedicating time for growth. And seeking out opportunities for you to grow. You may come to a new establishment as a manager and you are very good at what you do. But if you are not focused at investing in yourself and getting better, whether it's with your soft skills, how you conduct better meetings, how to coach your team members, how to discipline team members, disciplinary actions and what have you. Um, your customer service level. If you think you are so good because you're comparing yourself to some team members that have been here six months, you're not going to grow. You're going to stay stagnant. You're going to have that same income that you have next year and the year after that. You're going to be that, that one manager. So if you just remember that you've got to constantly improve. The world is moving and it's moving very, very fast. And if you're working for a company that is growing fast, you have got to grow your skill set. It's a hypocrisy for me to expect my manager or our team members to improve and do things better if I myself don't invest in my knowledge and my skill set as a business owner in every facet. You know, I study marketing. I study management. We read books for days, audiobooks. We spend over $100,000 a year in business coaching for ourselves because there is someone who has had $200 million exit out of their business, they can coach my husband and I. We only have six units. That's nothing. You may have one unit. Maybe I can help you and I can coach you. The knowledge is out there. So if you think you've made it and you've, you're all that and you know everything, the thing will crumble down. It, it will not, you will not hold. You got to move. You got to improve. That's with that. What are your thoughts on all these topics? Have you had an experience being a new manager going into a new store. I've seen that happening because I, as the owner, did not manage expectation. I brought a new manager to a new location. And guess what? Within a few weeks, three quarters of the team members all quit. They happen multiple times. And that's why when I moved this manager to this new location, I made sure to make a list of new manager tips that I'm sharing with you. I went over those things with this team member. I made sure she gets to know every team player there that she moves slower strategically, that she gathers intel, that she observes, that she creates a systematic approach to making changes, prioritizing all the things, fun stuff, fun topics. Would love to hear your thoughts. Subscribe to the show if you have not already. Like it, comment, it, what have you. It would mean the world. It tells me that you're listening, that you, these episodes hopefully are having a little bit of an impact for you. And with that, let's get back to work and make some dough. Thank you. Bye-bye.